took Kenneth Copeland or when Kenneth Copeland was brought over after he was arrested at the Dunbar Center? Was he interviewed? Yes. Okay. Mm. And did you help transport him? No. No. Okay. You met up with him 20 minutes later at the spot because you, either Kenneth Copeland or Detective McCure called you and drove straight down there because they wanted to relocate Kenneth Copeland because it was getting a little bit rowdy at the gymnasium, right? But y'all had backup already there, including someone located in a position to be able to, you know, control the crowd from a distance, right, Gaitha? But tell them about all of the big brass in different agencies that was willing to meet up with y'all down at the stadium in 20 minutes. Tell them about that, Gaitha. Are you aware of any statements uh, by Kenneth Copeland that are an exact match to anything? Same objection. Yeah, okay. So are there any statements by Kenneth Copeland that aren't reduced to writing or um, on video? By you? Were there any interviews or statements? That you know of by anybody having to do with this set of circumstances? Not by myself or investigator Dennis, no man. Don't talk low. You was talking loud in the interviews. Could you please speak up? And thank you, Your Honor, for forcing her to answer some questions because she's been a bad witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you know of any from anybody else? Okay. Then move on to the next question. And when you... Don't use your lady voice. Use your man voice you was using in the interviews. Thank you. Told Mr. Zachary, Demikion sat in that exact same chair. Um, was that after you had interviewed Mr. Z Mr. Garlington? In yes. other words, okay. Playing both sides. And did you ever try to trick anybody? No. What? Objection. Vague. You you gonna try to clean that up by asking that? Of course somebody gonna who man. I'm going to continue playing your honor at two twenty seven forty eight. Who I was in the car when they came to pick you up? When Moton came to pick me up? 
moved to the show maybe. Okay, moved to the show was in the car. I came pick you up. Where did I go? She went on, um, went to Paris home. Um, mm-hmm. When I left, we went to, um, to the house on MLK. Mm-hmm. Shannon B. and Tay got the car. Man, most of them stay in. He just changed the people in the car with him. He said Tay got out the car. But when she asked him who was in the car, did he say Tay was in the car just now? I see the pop. I see the 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 uh, what what happened. He didn't clarify that Tay this other Tay got out the other car, but she didn't make him clarify either. Which is weird in an investigation, because you want to make sure you get all this clear if you, as you're going. So right there, she was supposed to say so. Tay got out the other car. You saying, okay, okay. So both cars pull up at the location. Tay hop out the other car, woo, 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 and yo, get out this car that you was in. And oh, all right, bam, I got it. She ain't even clarify right there, which was kind of tricky. It was kind of tricky right there because if somebody say Tay got out the car after we move forward in the joint and you you don't clarify that this car, this other car with Tay and Trade on then pulled up, you, I mean, like you asking about the color? I said what color is it? What kind of gun is it? They have some city too, too hard. Uh, it looked like a bear gun, but it was it looked like a what? It looked like a big old deer gun, but it was an AK, you see? What about uh Demi Kion? He had a Muslim gun. Which was what? That um gun I had caught with. I thought the gun you got caught with was your gun that you bought. And you didn't shoot? No. But don't you own this time? You went and bought like three, four, five. Yeah. Well, we'll trip me out a little. We'll trip you out a little, man. Yes, he did. Uh-huh. uh-huh. We're going to uh-huh. get to that, though. Right. Uh-huh. So. What he tricked you out of him? Did Trey Don shoot any guns? No, he drive. So he was driving, so the driver basically stayed in the car. Yeah. And he stayed in the car. Yeah. How far did they get up to the house? I don't know, man. Went to him, Paul, way back. Like, they got up close to the house, though. I mean, like, the front driver. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they got up to the dog. I know they got the driver. I've seen that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and they shot that house. And then that way went to went Perry Home. Okay. How, how did you guys know what apartment was at Perry Home? Like, who? Say, say, know what Philo Girl That was because that's Philo Girl house, right? That's what you said, your baby mom. Your baby mom? So they know them from boy side, basically. Yeah. Y'all don't really have a home together. Right. All right. They beat some folks too. So it was like, they said the woman knew that they shot at the house. Mm-hmm. But how, how is it that 
because Tay's not slime. How is it that Tay even rolling with, with Shannon and y'all like that? Tay from Calhoun. Me and Mutu. Oh, he's originally from Calhoun. Yeah, and um, he's hanging with people. No people. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But y'all was hanging with Boo and he was already a rat before y'all jumped off the porch. So how that work? It's cool with y'all. Yeah. And then, now we had went on, so let's go with Perron. What about? Um, someone is getting bullets, huh? From where? Yo, they jumped off the porch into the arms of a rat. So, um, somebody spot that VA on, please. Tay was telling but too. Somebody, like, how so? Yo, remember? I, oh, yeah, yo, quote me. Before I ever knew Tay Rock with Boo, I said Tay was telling. Yo, remember when I looked at Tay jacket? I said Holmes telling. Holmes jacket damn near worse than Woody's. I said it all top. As soon as I read through that boy Charles, I said, Nah, Holmes telling. Y'all ain't even supposed to been on the street. Y'all ain't even supposed he ain't been on the, he shouldn't have been on the street in 2015 when this was going down. I just promise you, you look at the jacket beforehand. Uh, him still well and Woody got released in 2014 this summer, I believe. Around that time, don't quote me, but around that time, middle of 2014, it's like four to five of the shooters all get out on the street, y'all. I swear to God. I'm not making this up. This shit crazy when you look at the jackets. All of them was just in jail 2014 before the situation go down. All the people that's basically accused of, you know, doing something. And they all got jackets that say they should have stayed in there longer. And they might be telling. I promise you. Shell Kel, Woody, Tay, and goddamn, who else? Stillwell. All them jackets look fishy. What's that? I mean, you got something to be laying in the third. I don't know. A trust spot. What kind of uh, boots did y'all get? They ain't getting nothing for the top. They got some. They, they, they got some. They ain't getting nothing for um, the, um, the 223. They got some for the Sun City, too. Who got the 223? This is the one that the media had. My mom's not going to shoot up 223 rounds. So, is that my son's gun that had double drum? Is, is that the one you come about? Yeah. That's the one that you shoot? So, the gun that you got caught with on May 7th? Yeah. That my son's gun. Stupid. I, telling on these boys every time they bought a gun they was telling the police they had these straps they knew exactly what they was looking for that's the deal that arrowhead made with some of the detectives so they didn't get told on about working under the table or getting pressured for the guns that they were selling winding up in a whole bunch of trouble now eventually it did go down because these guns was winding up all across the united states it's actually documented so it's not, I mean, it's real odd that the most convenient spot for these boys to get straps was also, you know, caught up in some, a whole bunch of other flack around the United States. Real rap. Yep. Yeah, so boy. Yeah, boy. Sergeant Gaither, at this point, at 2.34.22 in this interview, can you tell the jury what is being shown to Quindarius Zachary on Detective Dennis's phone? A surveillance video from Arrowhead pawn shop of him purchasing a firearm. How did y'all get that? How did you all down there and got it? Because y'all had a relationship with the owner? A deal. Y'all do know the pawn shop dudes is cool with the police. Yeah. What? Do you know who go to the pawn shop and keep them alive? Smokers. Streets. Yes. You you ever went in a pawn shop and seen the, the stuff that's in that? All that stuff stuff. Yo. 
Who got tool sets and generators, cuz? So when the police walk in the pawn shop and look around, jewelry, tool sets, power, come on, bro. It literally looked like somebody just ran in somebody's spot in all pawn shops. Y'all do know that, right? <laughs> Yeah, some of it legit, but how, it, to keep the store replenished, replenished with items, it's all, man, it's cap, cap. Okay. Yo, what? just to let you know, most people that's real civilians, if they use a pawn shop, they really want their stuff back. You do know that, right? All right. Was it that led you all to drive down to Arrowhead and get that surveillance footage? Uh, we had receipts from where he purchased the firearms and um, we ran his name, we had his name run through the federal system to see what all firearms he purchased and the locations. And that's how we were able to narrow it down to the Arrowhead Pawn Shop in Jonesboro. When you talk about the federal registry or list or whatever that is, could you explain what that is that you are looking at to get his name? What What is yeah. it? The federal government basically has a, a database that keeps track of persons that uh, purchase firearms. Uh, during this investigation, we worked hand in hand with the ATF and uh, we utilized them and assist them with uh, checking names through their federal system. Does that list or system on the federal government include um, firearms that are purchased illegally on the street? No, no it's just firearms that are purchased from gun shops, uh, gun shows, or pawn shops. When you said that you had receipts, of guns that Quindarius Zachary had purchased. Where did you get those receipts from? From his apartment when we uh, executed a search warrant. And that was after his arrest in May? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember any other items that you were able to recover off the top of your head? I believe we recovered a firearm, um, a couple of cell phones. Uh, that's all I can remember at this moment. Now, when Quindarius Zachary mentioned the little 40 that he had just gotten two days before he got locked up, um, had you all, did you all, and you said we hadn't, we still have to run that. What did you mean? Uh, we recovered a, a 40 caliber Smith & Wesson, which is almost the size of the palm of your hand from his apartment. Uh, we hadn't had an opportunity to uh, have the ATF test fire the gun and see if it came back to any other shootings or um, stuff like that. Yo, if you want to know about the feds involved in this case, they worked the case with Atlanta. What's going on is the merging of state and federal and all of police groups. So if you pay attention to this case, this case was basically a test to see the agencies work together. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A, all agencies, pay attention. It was the test. For real. See, they used to beef and stay separate. But new funding came to, to, to put them together. Yeah, federal funding. That includes funding for your city and your state to get, you know, help from the federal government, which includes them sending their peoples because they have a federal interest. Now pay attention. They working closely with local law enforcement. Yeah, this nine years. What did Dennis say that he doesn't say in the trial? When Donovan Thomas died, the feds hit me and asked me, what do I know about him? And they wanted everything. That's when I started the investigation. Pay attention. Now, if you pay attention to what Gaither and Dennis said, they came in the way they moved into their position as gang investigators. You think that was just by mistake that they both came from places that was gang cities? So Atlanta been recruiting from gang cities for a minute. Yeah, pay attention. Thorpe told you he's from Chicago. Oh. Yeah. See, this play been in motion. Yes, in order to build a bigger city, you got to have, yeah. So look what they doing. 
So along the way, the feds then chipped off at dudes in the YSL trial for gun infractions and all of these types of things. A couple people went to the feds on both sides, if gang and YSL. So everybody's saying, yo, the feds are going to pick it up. No, 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 no. They already been picking at it the whole time. They've been giving it to Georgia. It's meant to be the feds working with GBI and local APD with funding to help get bigger convictions, which you need multiple agencies. You get it? You get it? More hours to work, more overtime, more more uh, opportunity, real rap. A bigger agency where the spread is direct. So you see it now, local APD has a direct connection to, to jump around. So what Underwood do? She was APD. She went federal. And she still worked with the same people. Hey. And why is it that you all were asking Mr. Zachary where each person that he said was in the car that Moncton was driving, where each person was seated? Why was that of any importance? It's overruled. Uh, just to get a better understanding of uh, each person's position in the vehicle and uh, based on uh, where we recover evidence from the shooting, just kind of wanted to make it a determination. Um, and when Mr. Zachary is showing. Oh, my bad. Yo, the reason why they needed to use Young Thug is it draws attention, but also they wanted to attack social media. So social media helps you close a case. You need some type of imagery to make a person a villain. If you just report on the crimes with lack of evidence, the people in the jury not going to believe it. They need physical and tangible things that make somebody look bad. You know what I mean? Real rap. So that's why they attack the rapper. They want to use the social media and the imagery to draw the attention and use it as a as a way to make these guys look bad. I believe they knew they had a trash case. They just wanted the attention to make sense for the funding and the forward moving of what they're trying to do. I think everything going is planned. Real rap. Motioning to Detective Dennis on the paper that Detective Dennis has in front of him where each person is sitting. Is he motioning in a manner consistent with what he had just verbally said to you all? Yes. Jimmy in the chat says the Fed has been investigating the music industry because of mob influence. Rico was set up for mob. I say this. Feds created the music industry and the Feds created the mob. And it's just a way of moving the people forward when you know the underworld will thrive regardless. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my opinion, though. I could be wrong. Okay. When you ask Mr. Zachary about Tay knowing where Philo stay. Who is the Philo you were talking about? Philip Collins. I can and Philo's on, girl, yeah, yeah. who is that that you were talking about? Do you remember a name, Kenyatta Troutman? Yes, Kenyatta Troutman. And was that who you his, were talking about? His child's mother, yes. And where was it that she lived? 1903 Drew Drive, Perry Holmes area. Now, Philip Collins, do you know who... Did he have a brother? Yes. And was Philip Collins documented in any of your files? Yes. How was Philip Collins documented? He was a member of Haiti Gang. Haiti Gang? What about his brother? What was his brother's name? Y'all approach. Uh, yeah. A lot of high schools, a couple of middle schools uh, in that particular area. So. Where is Capitol Homes located? with relation to the west side? Uh, Capitol Homes is more or less downtown, uh, Memorial Drive area. The west side is considered uh, Bankhead Highway, Hollywood Road, parts of Martin Luther King, Cascade. Okay. And were you, did you prior to Quindarius Zachary telling you that he and Moonton were from Capitol Homes um, and that that is where Tay was from, were you aware of those facts before you went into the interview? No. Sustained. Your Honor, um, with the court's permission, I'd like to revisit that at a break or another time. What?
Now, when Quindarius Zachary um, said that Tay used to hang with Big Boo, and you mentioned the name Quentin Porter, uh, would you tell the jury how you're familiar with, just briefly, Quentin Porter or the name Big Boo? I'm familiar with uh, Quentin Porter, a.k.a. Big Boo, from the Cleveland Avenue area. Um, he was a known gang member of uh, Raised on Cleveland Rock Crew. I've uh, worked several investigations involving him, uh, so I was I was familiar with the name. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to resume at 234.22. Actually, before I do, let me ask you this. When Quindarius Zachary um, referred to a spot and then told you a trap spot on Cleveland, would you tell the jury what a trap spot is? A uh, trap spot is a location where uh, drugs are normally sold or illicit activity is conducted. And based on the investigations that you have conducted as a uh, detective in the gang unit and during your time with the Atlanta Police Department, is a trap spot ordinarily a place where guns and ammunition are also stored? It is. And at the time that Quindarius Zachary told you about a trap spot on Cleveland, at that moment, did you know what trap spot on Cleveland he was talking about? Not at that exact moment, but I had an idea. And was the idea that you had confirmed at any time? No. Okay. Picking up at 234.22. Yeah, I got you. We did all of it. <laughs> so, after, after we got blue, mm -hmm. went, went pure home. Okay. Um, then don't even got out of the shower. Who got out of the shower this time? Tay, D, and Shannon. Tay, D, and Shannon again. Okay. And they had the same gun that they had before? From uh, there? No, nah, it was another one called this time. And Who? Potato. What's his name? I think his name is Lee. Lee? Did he get out of here? Yeah. Yeah, hang on. You remember what kind? I can remember what. Two hang on. Who called me today? He didn't call Taylor. That's Taylor's friend. Lee. They ain't, they ain't got no house to go on. Okay. We'll make that call. Pausing at 235.28. Sergeant, at the time you spoke with Mr. Zachary on August 5th, 2015, did you know either Tay, D, Shannon, or Moktoon to be wearing dreads during that time? No, they weren't. Okay. And when Mr. Zachary told you about a person named Lee, Did you know of a Lee associated with them, with YSL, that did have dreads at the time? I knew of a Lee that was associated with uh, Tay and Tradon uh, from MDC. Okay. Now, what Lee was that that you knew of? Ali Caldwell. Caldwell, C-A-L-D-W-E-L-L. And when you say dreads, do you are you able to describe the type of dreads that Ali Caldwell had? Yes, he had um, not necessarily like dreads like mine, but they were more or less like big planks. Uh, if any of you guys are familiar with uh, the rapper Jay Z, the, the larger plank style box that was his hairstyle. Yo, why do they keep using Jay Z as an example? Tom, that's a wig. Thank you. Ross. Continuing at 235 uh, I did um, carry home and shop. I carry home and shop. Shoot. One house. Where did they drop? I'm in the house. 405. I'm 390. But they, they met me on, we met some at the gas station. Which gas station? On Silver Road. And I got in the car. I'm in the house.
So someone met you right there, picked you up, and then she drove you to the house. We are good enough to drop it off at the house. I'm going to help you all come because you can still go to the house. Okay. So tell me about this line stuff. Shrine. Why, no, why do y'all call y'all self slime? Number one. I'm not no shrine. Why do they call them self slime? Because we still in the store. It looks like you're being slimy or brown. Say, like, say, say, um, say, man, you're cool, right? And you got a girl or something. And you need like, mm, I talk to your girl. That's all. So you really like slimy, it's good. So no rules. Like, yeah. It's like, I'm slamming that nigga. Yeah. Like, so even if we cool, like a rocky rock me. It's like, I'm just slamming. Yeah. So basically, no rules, no laws. But you, you say you ain't slamming? No. I ain't, like, they don't know, they don't know that we can get out. Why? Because my brother, you know, you don't really want me hanging around me. But you do. I know. You be mad. Who's your brother? And I ain't take You be mad. I want the dread. Yeah, how you know? Come on, man. He, he, he mad, he mad that I hang around with you. But he's fine, though, ain't he? Yeah, he's fine. So I'm saying, what, what, what does it matter? He's fine, though, and then I'm like, I'm sick. Mm-hmm. So it, it, like, something happened to me. He'll feel bad because yeah. he kind of got down to it. I had this dirty deep and, and, and clean out of the lake up for a long time. Ain't nobody fucked with him. Y'all didn't fuck with each other. Those dogs were from Wood. So that just kind of brought everybody up. How close are you on Wood? How close were y'all? We, only reason we got to go because. I don't hang with Moon for a nice one, we'll hang with the mm-hmm. And then another one, what you call it? We started there. So your Woody people, meaning Demetri, Yon, and Shannon, yeah. everybody just kind of start linking up. Yeah. Y'all ain't never had no problem nothing with each other? No. We ain't never had no problem with Campbell. Well, they ain't never had no problem with Campbell. I ain't never got to talk about from Campbell. I'm ain't nobody never got to talk about from Campbell. Mm-hmm. It just ain't up like that. So how did it get to a point where, it's, you know, you really didn't have too much, really? What, no. Huh? No, go ahead. But B started, that's what you're saying? Yeah. Kill them, shot up, don't get them the house. Let's do that. Right. And then, the dumb one, um, who they had called me with the screaming or something. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, um, but they had shot through a window out. On oh, which car? The yeah, SS. Right. And he, and throw like, no, nah, I ain't cool with them niggas, they take my window. Mm-hmm. So why about they shoot up the dugout down there? Who didn't care if they had some person going on, I guess, who did it there. Who got more girl, more money. Both one, and that one has money. They play for somebody else shit. Yeah. So, you know how it is. Kill one, like, throw a coming crucial, gain up money throwing stuff. Kill them one to do that. Right. Yeah. And, but throw one, he went, he ain't clicking them, he ain't like them. Right. He ain't like, kill shot in one of So just over there in windshield? Yeah. Now we're trying to find it together, huh? I mean, I don't know what's there. But y'all can do it. Y'all can do it. No. We, you know, I'm saying I wasn't physically there. We know about it, but yeah. how many times they shoot up? Like 200. So they were just done. Yeah. But they knew y'all was in there? Yeah, people posting pictures on Instagram, videos on Instagram. I turned it off. People posting videos on Instagram and stuff. And shoot, everybody finna go. Those of you got to go first. So, everybody walking to their car. I stay in the house, still again. I ain't had no gun anyway, so they don't send me walking to it. Walking right. out there. Then they don't, you just hear gunshots stuff going on. They tell you it's in the woods across the street or something. Mm-hmm. Then don't everybody right out the door? Everybody who's in those guns right out the door stuff. Right. So when this windshield got shot out, he can run a kale about it. Like, what? He, he knew. They know it hurt. It's out in DC there. Mm-hmm. And that when I got shot. Um, Who shot you? I don't know. Okay. It's just, it's just you in this club. Okay. Um, they got in DC there. But come find out in DC and do it. Kale had told up. They wanted to create the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she told, she missed with Mootum, she told Mootum. And went to Wait, the third baby mom was missing with Mootum? No, the third baby mom told my sister. Okay. And my sister was missing with Mootum. Okay. So, yeah. sure? Yeah. Okay. And went to know. So, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to follow you. So, y'all in the dugout, they shoot up a bunch of rounds. Y'all come outside. They stand outside. I ain't no one. Well, they, they, they went outside. They are, everybody made it out there? I don't know. I mean, how do you know that it was Kaylin that did I just told them I didn't know. Kale, I, mean, I told them they thought it was NBC, so I don't. Kale ran his mouth to put your head in front of the truck. And then that was, um, that's when he got back. Yeah. She told my sister, my sister told him to. Because then Mountain Katon told them that it was Kale. Mountain told who they were doing. Okay. So, this incident with Nut Chain getting, Chain and Phone getting stolen out of the car. No way before. I, I don't know. When, 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 when did this happen? When did this happen? That was January, right? Yeah. Uh,
Forty-three thirteen. Sergeant, while we are advancing, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Did you know during uh, your interview with Mr. Zachary in August 2015 um, that before he told you, did you know that he um, was sick, as he called it? Yes. All right. And was that with an autoimmune issue? Yes. Okay. Was there anything about um, that illness that at all appeared to affect his understanding or ability to communicate with you during the August 5th interview? No. When you heard Mr. Zachary say that he had never had a problem with Mechanicsville, did you have any particular understanding or what was it that you understood him to mean? The area, the physical location, mechanics bill, or something else? Objection, Your Honor. Relevant speculation. Ever rolled. I understood it to mean uh, 30 deep. 30 deep operates in mechanics field. And based on your background and your expertise as a gang expert, Woody, Shannon, and Demikion, did they have any affiliation with 30 deep? Yes. Were they all each 30 deep? The three you just named? Yes. yes. When you heard Mr. Zachary talking about Kel, who did you understand him to mean? Uh, Kelvin Watts. Is Kelvin Watson a gang? Yes. What gang? Uh, Bird gang, as well as Inglewood family. If gang? If, if gang. Okay. As you heard Mr. Zachary talk about the dugout, were you familiar with that location? Yes. And is that also the gambling house? It is. Where is that location? Uh, around Lakewood Avenue, McDonough. McDonough Street, not the city, but. All right. Area. And is that an area that you knew of any particular game to hang out? <sighs> Southeast Atlanta, I mean, it's kind of no man's land. Okay. It's, not, it's, it's really close to the area for if game, but it's not necessarily within that territory. And before Mr. Zachary told you about the dugout getting shot, did you know about that incident? Uh, from previous interviews, yes. All right. We're going to pick up. With the interview.
Monday, y'all know y'all got beef. Y'all still go to the club. I ain't go to the club like that. You ain't go to the, go to the crucial like that. But you hung out with him, like, on the block. I'm like, hang out with him on the block. But what I said, I'm talking, I ain't talking about killing. Oh, yeah, I used to hang with him. Like, I, I might go push one Monday, then not go next Monday if I know it's going to be some. Right. So since you got shot, well, in November, right? Yeah. How many times a day you went to cruise since then? About 10. I know. Okay. Huh? where they case fumble. He giving felonious information. They case say that that he gave it to um Woody because Woody needed a different rental car because the Corvette was too small when he was trying, you know, carry his baby around. Remember the state did say that, right? Well, regardless, they saying he gave the car to Woody. Oh, 
Oh, so you wasn't there. So this triple hearsay. So one of the state's witnesses say Woody didn't have nothing to do with it, and then somebody told him that Woody was the shooter. So they getting they getting different information all over the place, y'all. Now, were they specifically going for nothing? Or were they going to somebody that they want to be girl? Okay, so they want to Why pause it? They was about to say why they was ready getting nut. You need to explain that. Why you need to stop it? Advancing to 248.33. Nobody is saying Thug wanted us to do it. Because we had to get nut out the way. So why sell as a gang could do this and move this and then we going to be popping. Nobody's saying that. Depicted in that photograph that you were asking Quindarius Zachary to identify? Uh, Demise McMullen, aka Nard. Nard? Nard. Okay. Nard. And when he told you, when Quindarius Zachary told you the people who were in the car and was describing Donovan Thomas's murder, who did you understand him to mean when he said Nard? Demise McMullen. Is that the same Demise McMullen that you looked at um, in conjunction with Kelvin Treadwell for the Dexter Montgomery shooting? Yes, I arrested him for that shooting. Fresh, fresh, freaky fresh. Picking up at two forty eight thirty three. So Nut green lighted him before he got smoked. So why was YSL green lighted before he got smoked? They can't prove that. They keep saying that YSL, Woody got green lighted with YSL, allegedly, by Nut or before Nut died. So if Thug was still cool with Nut, how could they have gotten green lighted and we don't know why? Before. Not died. You said his gang had a power. That how they spot him. Okay. Okay. And they said that YSL and Dirty D got a green light, which basically means you kill him if you see him. Like, they fool. Yeah. So, why did he put that out there? Do you know why he said that? Everybody loved Nut. YSL turned into food. Nobody got smoked. 
So did he really green like YSL? Who from YSL got smoked? None of them people in the cars from Cleveland Avenue. Who we say Yak, Nod, Stillwell, and Do I? Who from Cleveland? Is Do I from Cleveland? Who from Cleveland? Treadwell been getting away with charges for more than 10 years, y'all. That boy caught his first felony in 2018 or 19. So, But he got charges he was charged for all the way up. So he was beating charges for years, y'all. I'm talking about drug charges all the time. He involved, but he ain't, he ain't get no convictions, y'all. I think he even hit the police while he was drunk driving and got away with it. I swear to God, I might be wrong, though. You know where at on Cleveland? It's back. Get yeah, on with that dress is on Oak though. On, on Oak Drive? Yeah. So, this is all what Shannon is telling me. Oh, um, this was both. Shannon ain't yet told me, but this Shannon, um, what Shannon told me first. So Shannon told me, they both told me the same story though. Where were you guys when Shannon was telling you this and what day was it? Same day or day after? Same night, same night, Shannon. Um, I walked in the door, I had just walked me and moved when I just pulled up at the house. Mm -hmm. And Shannon, um, Shannon finna go to a girl house. And all the bullets were going out the gun. Like, he like, we ain't got no guns. They see him move some gun. Right. Move some little handgun. Mm -hmm. They see him move some gun and go to the store. I'm supposed to say, wait, I ain't got no bullets. And that was Shannon. And Shannon started talking. Move mm -hmm. some still didn't know. He ain't know that night. Right. He ain't know that night that nothing had killed. Nah, he knew that nothing had killed him. He didn't know that they, 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 they did. They were like, I'm going to talk to him. That's what I heard too. And then that was Shannon was telling me the story. Said they were going to be bushes, but they looked up and seen nothing. Mm -hmm. Say they had rolled back around. And then he started shooting them. So, so he had nothing to walk. So was Kale out there? No, I don't think Kale. Kale went out there in front of our shop. Well, he wasn't talking. Yeah. I don't think he's out there, but it's just like, we seen nothing. Right, because nothing made the, the call for all the youngers. Nothing had the yeah. rank, right? You know what nothing rank was? What? I'm asking, do you know what his rank was in his? Nah, it's supposed to be an OG or something. Yeah, OG. So, because he's making the call, he made the call in green light at YSL, so Dirty Beat. Right. 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 But I thought the call came from inside the jail. In the other interrogation, Woody, you know, Kenneth Copeland, he told him that um, Mo Rise Williams, Maurice Williams, yeah, ABG Mo, he said the word came from him. So which one is it, y'all? See, if you remember and you've been keeping up along the way, I've been telling you that the state is floating multiple motives out. And he just wants the jury to understand which one to pick. But I think that's going to be a problem. Maybe it's a case of over-prosecuting when you don't have the proper information and you just want to try to float something out in the air to see if it'll stick. Yeah. Pay attention.
Yeah. High nut put the green light. He ain't the highest. Carlos out on the street. Carlos Carter is higher than nut. Yeah. So you got Mo, Carlos Carter, then nut. Maybe somebody else before nut. I heard another name. Yeah. So do the state even know the truth? Try to paint Woody as being some type of stepper. They holler that boy down there laying on the couch scared. boy was laying down. So he went to the interrogation room, then went to go lay down. Sorry. Gee. What are you step on? All right. You better watch I wanna out. I want to talk a little bit about um, he a real what you covered with Mr. Zachary. Yeah, a real in step the clip that the jury just heard. Now, they said. when you're talking to Mr. Zachary about Donovan Thomas's murder, had you been assigned by the lead detective to get any information on that murder? No. And were you at any time working under Detective Thorpe while you were investigating the back and forth shootings between YSL and If Gang in 2015? And by under? Right. Were you working? In her pride rate getting her feelings. Watch, she don't like the underword, so she ready to clarify, nah. But if you go look at episodes of First 48, they got First 48 episodes where Thorpe is the investigator and Dennis and Gaither is helping him. Yeah. In the homicide unit underneath him. No. Did you work with him in some instances? For instance, in this interview, did he come in and listen? 
Yes, he did. But did you take direction from him? And were you consulted by him before he took out warrants on this murder? No, I wasn't taking direction or consulted. Oh, we would pride. share information just because we knew um, our shootings were related, were direct, you know, relation to his homicide. So uh, if we could gain information for him as well as our own. I told you, y'all, look, look, look. It's her pride don't want her to admit that in this investigation, you was following the lead of Thorpe dealing with specific situations, the way it looked as far as the optics. Look, she still don't want to clarify. She could have easily clarified the optic. In that situation, that was the kind of, the, the, the vibe, you know, the way it was set up in that situation. I give you that. Yeah, we was working underneath of Thorpe's investigation in, this, in that setting. In most settings, we don't. See, look, she could have easily clarified it, but she was hurt. And she don't even know how to articulate how she feel because she in her feelings. Now, I normally don't say this, but that's sad that Shorty is won't even get that man that credit a little bit. Of, I thought he was your co-worker. But if you see, she pulling rank. Now, she on some old nah, we, we gang. They over there, they the top of they joint. We the top. You feel me? She trying to pull that type of rank or a sword fight. That's lame. Um, we would definitely share that. Okay. The Kelvin Treadwell, when you all asked Quindarius Zachary, um, did he mean Kelvin Treadwell? Is that the same one that was on scene during the preceding the Dexter Montgomery shooting? Oh, yes. Evidently? Yes. And when Mr. Zachary spoke about um, taking Um. She's separating from Thorpe because he botched the initial investigation. And that's the same thing that um, Sprinkle was doing. I mean, at this point, basically, it's getting exposed that whoever had the lead. So if you pay attention at, on each investigation, someone gets the, the, the responsibility of being the lead. You know what that means. Yeah, you already know. You get the you get the the perks that come with solving it, but also if you drop the ball, you're gonna be looked at for the fumble. Come on, baby. Yeah, touchdowns and fumbles. Which way are we going? You know how the fans gonna judge it though. When he talked about if gang having a spot on MLK, were you familiar with what that spot was? Yes. Where was that spot on MLK? 1428 Adele Avenue. Now, when Mr. Zachary talked about a green light, can you explain to the jury what that was? Yes, in, uh, in gang terms, a green light is basically giving permission to uh, lower ranking members of the, that particular gang that whoever's green lighted, you're giving permission for them to harm them or kill them. And when Mr. Zachary told you about O.G. Bentley's spot on Cleveland off Oak Drive that the guns were taken to, were you familiar with O.G. Bentley's spot off Cleveland on Oak Drive? I was familiar with the spot. And was that a place that you would describe as a trap house? Yes. So OG Bentley had a active trap house that the police was aware of that gang members hung out at and he never got charged or the house never got raided and he's not included in this indictment. But the gas station situation with half a head was linked to OG Bentley and you linked him to young thug, but he's not involved in the Rico. Wow. That's crazy. Now, before you spoke with um, Mr. Zachary and Mr. Zachary told you that, was it that Woody had shot Cal? 
Yes, I believe that's what he said. Did Woody tell you he had shot Cal? Of course not. Why, of course not? Because he lies? So you mean to tell me he gave you information about other people but never told the truth about himself? Oh, yeah, that's what you just admitted to? So... Okay. And when you all were asking Mr. Zachary about the timeline from November to January, why were you all interested in what was happening from November up until January 10th? Uh, we kind of wanted a starting point to figure out why was everything occurring, uh, if we could locate prior incidents leading up to it, whether it was shootings, damage to properties, uh, collecting evidence, to see if we could just link, link the cases together. Okay. The January 6th incident, um, were you all familiar with that before you spoke with Mr. Zachary? Were you familiar with yes. anything happening on January 6th? Yes. And what were you familiar with? Uh, there was a shooting, I believe it was damage to property at uh, Club Crucial. It was a bunch of vehicles were damaged. Um, I don't believe anyone got shot. I believe Demikian was assaulted inside, Club inside the club and proceeded to shootings. And after. were you aware um, of Yak and Duke getting arrested on that same day? Yes. Driving away from Club Crucial. Correct. Who told on them? It, the no. evidence. Okay. Who told on those guys? Your Honor, the court had asked us um, if I think if there was a particular spot that would make it um, better to break and then continue, but we okay. can go on. I think uh, that is, this is, is a, this one. This is one. Okay. All right. It's oh. The noon hour. So we'll go ahead and break for our lunch. Um, and Atlanta Hawks, one of them in particular, Lakia Gaither. It is her second season with the Atlanta Hawks, and she is one of only two female security guards in the entire NBA. It's the court. The well, speaking of defense, let's talk about defense for a second off the court. The security team for the Atlanta Hawks, one of them in particular, Lakia Gaither. It is her second season with the Atlanta Hawks, and she is one of only two female security guards in the entire NBA. It's pretty incredible. She served 18 and a half years for the Atlanta Police Department. After that, worked for two months for the DA's office, got the call from the Atlanta Hawks, had a conversation with Vince Velasquez, director of security here for the Atlanta Hawks organization and basically right after that call Vince said yeah we knew that she was the person for the job there was some stiff competition they had to make her sweat it out a little bit they waited a couple days before they called Lakia back but finally called her back and the rest is history this is now her second season with the team and it's actually her birthday today so we wanted to wish her a happy birthday oh, but talking to Vince Velasquez head of security flag. here for the Atlanta Hawks he said she's just been an incredible person to work with he said his favorite partner out of the four partners he had, and then he added so far. His favorite partner so far is a bit. Who you get next? He goes, no, 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 we're going to stick with Kia for a little while. I also talked to Kevin Herter about it and just said, what has she meant to you and the organization and the team in general? Because she's one of only two female security guards that travel with the team. And Kevin said she's a, she was a rookie last year, so we had to give her, you know, the initiation a little bit. But... She is someone that is so loyal to this team. She's always there, dependable when you need her. And we just love having her, not only as a coworker, but also as a friend. And then Kevin also laughed and said, and most importantly, she always holds the bus for me on the road. He's always getting on right at 4.30.
4.30 or 4.45 whenever the bus leaves. So Lakia is always holding up the bus for him. And I also talked to Lakia about it and just said, look, you're blazing trails for women in the future, for women years to come in sports, in security in general. And I said, what does that mean to you? She said, first of all, it's been incredible to work for the Atlanta Hawks organization as a whole. The team, the coaching staff, the front office has all been incredibly amazing to her. They've embraced her and made her feel like a family here. She said she's beyond grateful and also just being a female in the industry, being able to blaze trails. She said it's really, really cool to be one of the only two. Hopefully in the future there's going to be four, there's going to be eight, there's going to be 16. So just walk in her footsteps and she's helping to teach everybody for years to come. So it's pretty incredible. We wanted to celebrate Lakia Gaither on her birthday and also being one of the only two female security guards for Women's History Month. Trev, it's pretty incredible what she's doing and how she's blazing trails, not only for the Atlanta Hawks, but just for women in general in sports. Oh, without